Hello and welcome to this Uni Taster On Demand event today. The subject area we're going to be looking at is animation, visual effects and games. And I'm delighted to be joined by an expert speaker today that's going to help us to talk about it. And that is Anna Ramesh joining us from Norwich University of the Arts. With these events, we ultimately cover why you might be interested in studying the course, what to expect on it, application tips and careers. And don't forget, we've got hundreds of these available. So if you compare in animation, visual effects or games with another subject, you can watch other sessions where we look at other topic subject areas and also are joined by other expert speakers. But in terms of today's session, you can see the content checklist just here. But ultimately, we're going to look at why you might be interested in studying the course and then focus on things like the differences between animation, visual effects and games, if coding and programming is important or is it not? Maybe some inside information in terms of how films are made. I know there's a mention of Spider-Man, Godzilla, Captain Hook as well. But ultimately, it's about tooling you up to make really good university decisions. And with that, I'll pass things over to Anand Ramesh, joining us from Norwich University of the Arts. My name is Anand Ramesh, and I am a senior lecturer in animation and visual effects at Norwich University of the Arts. Let me tell you about the animation, VFX and games industries, the various specialisms or specialist fields within them, what you can expect to learn in university courses in these subjects, what to consider when applying for these courses, and where these courses could take you in terms of jobs. Simply put, animation is movement. Though you might have heard about the technical definition of animation as moving images, we firmly believe that the art of animation and VFX is more about moving an audience than moving images. Because we are natural storytellers and animation and visual effects can help you expand your narrative canvas and tell your stories to the right audience with games bringing that additional interactive element to it. Today there is almost no industry that does not employ some form of animation or visual effects in one way or the other. We can broadly classify the specialist areas of this industry into 2D animation, stop motion animation, 3D animation and visual effects. Here in this picture you can see a few of our students using the various workshops and media labs to create 2D, 3D and stop motion content. To get a bit more clarity into what each of these mean, think of films like The Wolf Walkers, Kubo on the Two Strings, Luca and The Avengers. Now The Wolf Walkers is a 2D animated film. Kubo on the Two Strings is a stop motion animation film. Luca is a 3D animation film. And The Avengers is a visual effects heavy film. There is an inherent visual effects component in almost all of these, with of course the visual effects specialist stream that also involves integrating external elements into live action plates. Now let us look at the sample pipeline of 2D animation. Every animated film or every film in general starts with story. Why just say film? Every piece of content out there starts with a story. Even if it's a simple brand logo, it has to deliver a story. So starting with a story, it then expands into the visual form of story, which is called storyboarding. Then from the storyboards, we create concept art. It is the visual guideline of how the film should look. Then we create the rough sound that accompanies these visuals and we cut together an animatic or a story reel, which is the first rudimentary format a film will take, which is essentially timing these storyboards out, adding some very basic animation into it to give a rough feel of how this film will pace itself out. Based on the concept art, artists go in and create a color script for the film, which defines the visual look and feel of the overall film. Once we lock that, it, the film goes into the design phase. And when we say design, it could be world design or environment design, or it could be character design. Once the design phase is complete, then we move into animating the film. Simultaneously, the audio engineers and the composers get to scoring the film, creating sound elements and music. Once the animation is done, then we compose the film. When we say compose the film or compositing, here what we mean is bringing multiple layers together. Because the background artists would have done the backgrounds on a separate layer, character animators would have animated the characters in a separate layer. These will be brought together. And then we add the sound, we take the final images and we edit it together 
to give the final film. The pipeline is not so different when it comes to stop motion animation with a good chunk of the pre-production part which is in orange staying the same. But stop motion has a physical counterpart to it. So once the design is complete, we move into maqueting or creating the miniatures. We create the armature that will help us move the character's limbs, which is the puppets. And we also create the sets or the backgrounds. Then we test the various materials that are going to be employed in making the film. And here by materials, we mean physical materials. What is this wooden bench going to be made of in a stop motion film? What is water going to be made of in a stop motion film? Because the end result should look like wood, should look like water, but they need not necessarily be made out of wood and water. So we do a rigorous phase of material testing. Then we fabricate the various elements, the puppets, layers of clothing, the environments, the various props, all these go through a fabrication phase. Once we fabricate, we construct the elements, which is just like the word says, building them. Then we move into animation. And with animation, we also have a lighting phase. These miniature sets have to be lit. Some elements like we saw in the image earlier may be shot against a green screen. So once the animation is all done, the green screen has to be removed. And then we composite the multiple elements together, add the final sound and music, edit them into the film. Moving on to 3D animation, once the design phase is done here, we move into creating the assets in 3D, which is the modeling phase. So you have character modeling, we have environment modeling, and then we have CFX or character FX, which is everything from simulating the cloth, hair, fur, and so on. Then we move into the rigging phase, which sets up the bones and controllers for all the characters and props that need to be animated. Then once the models are done and the environments are done, they go into the surfacing phase. Here is where we paint the textures, we create shaders, which essentially defines what materials they are made up of. Simultaneously, as the models are created, we do a rough layout pass, which is assembling the scene. Then for each shot in the film, we do a breakdown pass, which is collecting all the models and rigs required for that particular shot. Then we start animating. Once the animation is done, based on the movement of the characters, we do a final set dressing pass or a final layout pass. And then we add the effects. Effects here meaning all your fire, smoke, dust and whatnot. Then on top of this, we do the lighting. Then we render everything out, generating the images. And then we go through a compositing phase, bring them all together, add the final music and sound, the final film comes out. In the visual effects pipeline, we have the added live action component. So we have to film the plates. Based on the scale of the film, we do a tech vis or a technical visualization as you will call it. Then we'll do a pre-visualization or a pre vis of the entire film, which is a rough animation of the entire film to see the scale and scope and even help the directors decide camera angles which would be ideal help the vfx supervisor also to plan to what level you need to construct the set physically what level can be extended digitally then you have the complete cg animation or 3d animation pipeline for any 3d characters that have to come into the film say for instance you have a monster like godzilla coming into the movie then that goes through the entire 3D animation pipeline, like how we discussed. But because there is a live action component involved in it, we do a camera tracking pass, which translates the live action camera into the 3D world, because that is the camera that we have to use as a reference to animate our characters. And then say you have a, a character that has a hook at the end of the arm like captain hook does then we have to track the movement of the hand of the actor playing captain hook so that that hand can be replaced by the metallic hook later on so we do a body tracking pass as it is called and then of course 
there is an equivalent layout pass that happens in the VFX pipeline as well. And the entire CG pipeline follows. We may have crowd elements like the zombies in World War Z, for instance. So we have a crowds department that does that. And then we have the additional effects like the whole sparks of Doctor Strange or the web of Spider-Man and whatnot. Then we have the lighting phase, which is more crucial here because there is not only an artistic lighting setup as you would think about it in a 3D animated film, but you also have to accurately match the lights on set. So the live action and the generated elements can blend together seamlessly, which happens in the compositing phase. The general pipeline is very similar with a lot of specialist components getting added along the way, which makes up for each of those specialist fields of study within animation visual effects. So what you will learn in a university course in animation visual effects is first up, you will get a broad understanding of the various animation VFX techniques and a deeper understanding of each stage of the animation or VFX pipeline, how they fit together, how one department plays off another. And this means you not only get an understanding of the styles of animation and techniques, you also understand and respect the close relationship between film and animation VFX because you will be learning basic film skills such as film language, film analysis, camera handling, shooting for VFX, how to set up lights for lighting miniatures in stop motion animation, the technical know-how of cameras, lenses, anything that you can think of that happens in a live action film, you will have to understand and appreciate within the animation visual effects fields as well. And subsequently, you can specialize in one area of your choosing. That way you gain a deeper knowledge of that specialist field. Within your chosen area of specialism, let us say 3D animation, for instance. Within that chosen area of specialism, you can choose to specialize further and say, I only want to do animation. I'm not going to specialize in creating the models. You can also say, I want to be a generalist. You can choose to be a generalist. You can choose to be a specialist. What do universities look for in prospective student who applies to study animation visual effects? Universities want to see your creativity, your storytelling abilities, and of course, your technical skills, which means when you apply for a program in animation visual effects, what you submit can consist of your drawings, your designs, your animations, your photographs, story concepts, character concepts, models, if you have done puppets or if you have created 3D models, any films that you've made and any storyboards that you have created, if you have edited them together to create animatics and how all of them come together, how you have brought everything together. Ensure that in your application to a university, you show both the process and the final result because by showing the process, you also demonstrate your research skills. You show that you have tried out multiple iterations and you have tried out multiple alternatives and you have made an informed decision on how your final look is going to be. Of course, there is a significant overlap of this pipeline with the games courses as well because most of the skills and techniques you learn in animation and VFX can be easily transferred to a career in games. And with the growth of techniques like virtual production in the VFX industry, a lot of artists who train in game engines like Unreal Engine are also transitioning into the VFX and animation industries. So there is a significant overlap in the technical content of animation, visual effects and games programs. Because today, a lot of 3D animation and visual effects programs have also started teaching game engines. Then comes a big question. Do I need to know programming? Do I need to know coding? To apply for any of these courses, the short answer is it is essential if you're applying for a games development course, but not for animation or VFX or games art or games design. However, if you do know programming, you may be able to create custom solutions even within a 3D or VFX tool like Maya or Nuke. You may be able to create plugins 
and shortcuts that may make your life easier. Now the next question comes, how many jobs can I apply for if I study animation, visual effects and games? We saw multiple pipelines here. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that each stage of the pipeline gives rise to a number of jobs. Just to give you a brief overview of the kinds of jobs that you can apply for, you can become a 2D artist or a storyboard artist, a background artist, a character designer, a color coordinator, a concept artist, or you can become an illustrator, a layout artist, you can become a, a 3D environment artist, a 3D character modeler, you can become a lighting artist, you can become a producer, you can do rotoscoping, you can do a, be a texture artist, a creative director, you can be a 3D animator, stop motion animator, fabricator, there are so many jobs available in this industry in general. This is definitely a fun industry to work in. There are not many industries that can confidently say you can see your work come to life in front of you. And quite honestly, the thrill of seeing your name in the end credits of a film as it rolls by, that is that's a guaranteed goosebumps moment for anyone. So I hope that gave you a clear idea of what this industry is like, what education in this industry is like, and what kind of jobs are available for grabs. All the best for your application process. Thank you.